Because this idea came as Joseph and Sidney Rigdon were translating the Bible in the John Johnson home in, in Ohio, and they came to where it says that people will be resurrected, that there will be a resurrection of the just and a resurrection of the unjust. And that caused Joseph to marvel. And I, I might be reading into it a little bit, but knowing that God was going to resurrect everybody into eternal life in a bodily form caused Joseph to marvel and wonder, um, in a sense, why would God resurrect uh, people to eternal life just to send them to hell forever? And it made Joseph start to ponder on that, and it launched him and Sidney Rigdon into a vision, multiple visions, as I'll get with you, that teach this concept that everybody is going to a degree of heaven. So, to quote our own Bible dictionary so that we understand our own doctrine, quote, hell, as thus defined, will have an end when all the captive spirits have paid the price of their sins and enter into a degree of glory after the resurrection. Statements about an everlasting hell, which we can find statements like that in the scripture, even in our own scriptures like Helaman 6.28 and Moroni 8.13, those must be interpreted in their proper context in the light of Doctrine and Covenants 19.4-12. That's the end of quote. That's from our Bible dictionary under hell. That's the quote where the Lord tells uh, uh, through Joseph to Martin Harris that Martin needs to repent lest he suffer everlasting punishment. And then it's almost like God says, not that you will literally suffer forever, but everlasting is my name, God's name. Therefore, when I say everlasting punishment, what it means is you'll suffer God's punishment, but the punishment won't last forever. And so, in a way, things like everlasting hell or everlasting damnation might not be a literal and appear not to be a literal thing. Joseph Smith did say one time, by the way, that what the hell that will exist in the next life is knowing that we could have had more uh, than we've received, uh, but that uh, because of our disobedience or our lack of, uh, of following the ordinances of the gospel, we haven't received that. But uh, hell and the idea that we'll be in this burning place uh, out of the presence of God in any way, shape, or form isn't what section 76 is saying. Uh, Elder James E. Talmadge said that uh, to hell there is uh, not only an entrance but also an exit. I actually one time was teaching this concept and I had a student say, I don't like this. Uh, I don't like this idea that everybody's going to heaven or a heaven. And, and I, I asked the student why. Um, and they said, well, because what about people who do terrible things? Like, I, I just don't think it's fair that, uh, that they're going to inherit a degree of heaven. Uh, even the worst, the most wicked people on this earth who have done the most heinous things, um, uh, terrible things that have caused unnecessary suffering, which we all know uh, and, and, and various have experienced in various ways. Well, to this student, I said, you know, that's a valid point, and, and and something to consider. I said, but consider first of all that uh, everybody who was born on earth did accept Jesus in the pre-mortal life. They did accept his plan, and they did accept Christ as their Redeemer. So, in a way, uh, they're being rewarded for their faithfulness in their first estate in, to some degree, because only those uh, in the pre-mortal life, only those who won't get a degree of heaven are those who weren't faithful in the first estate. And just another thing to consider, I said to the student, remember also that Section 76 is also very clear that those who are wicked and whoremongers and adulterers and murderers and lovers and makers of lies, telestial description, that they will not be part of the resurrection of the just. They will not uh, rise uh, in the morning or afternoon of the first resurrection. Uh, they will endure in the spirit world, in spirit prison, and they will pay the price for their sins, uh, and they will not for uh, the whole millennium, and then they will not be redeemed until they have paid the utmost farthing uh, for their sins. Uh, at the end of the millennium is when they'll be resurrected. So let's keep that in mind as well. Just a, a side note about this idea about the three degrees of heaven. Well, not only did my student have a hard time with it, um, um, but other people, when Joseph had this revelation and Sidney with him, it was a dual revelation. Uh, other people uh, reacted differently uh, to it. W.W. W. Phelps, 
he called this quote, the greatest news ever published to man. Uh, W.W. Phelps must have had more of a universalist uh, bent uh, to him. Wilford Woodruff said, when I read the vision, I felt to love the Lord more than ever before in my life. On the flip side, um, some people who are maybe grew up with a little bit more of a Calvinist or a uh, strict uh, God is will condemn you mentality uh, like the Youngs. Uh, Brigham's brother, Joseph Young, confessed, quote, I could not believe it at first, the vision, uh, why the Lord is going to save everybody. Oh, and Brigham himself, uh, later in an 1852 discourse, said that the vision, quote, was a great trial to many. Some apostatized because God had a place of salvation in due time for all. Brigham said he, he struggled with the idea himself, saying that my traditions were such that when the vision first came to me, it was so directly contrary and opposed to my former education, I said, wait a little. I did not reject it, but I could not understand it, end of quote. Uh, that's a great uh, line, by the way, just in general. If ever new revelation comes or new directive from prophets, that runs contrary to our tradition and our upbringing and our understanding. Uh, wait a little. Uh, do not reject it. Uh, give it time for the Lord to teach you on it. 